Hi, this is Dr. Kessler. Uh, our lecture uh, for strategic planning uh, this time is about strategies. And everything that we've done so far, uh, developing a background and introduction, uh, transitioning from introducing the organization into the situational assessment and, and identifying all the key challenges that the organization faces was sort of a pr prelude to what comes next. Because from the situational assessment, derive the mission, vision, values, but even more important, the goals that uh, or the outcomes that are going to be achieved over the next three to five years. And an organization that really wants to be effective really needs to put all of its resources to work to achieve the desired outcomes, the things that are listed as the goals and objectives. And so the goals and objectives constitute uh, what is to be done, but the strategies really determine how those goals will be achieved. And so strategies are really the domain of innovation, of change, of uh, bold and, and, and um, positive moves for an organization, especially if the situation has suggested that the organization needs to make changes. So uh, we're going to talk about strategies uh, in this lecture. And you can sort of see on the uh, opening page here that we've got a bit of a Snoopy cartoon. Uh, and he's uh, reading about strategies. And you can see strategies are to predict the future, to visualize, to connect to question things, to clarify, and also as we talk about in the performance measurement uh, lecture, to evaluate progress in achieving the strategies. So that's what we'll talk about in this particular lecture. The major points, uh, we'll just uh, once again, I know you've heard it a lot, we'll talk about results-based management. Uh, we'll define what we mean by strategy. Uh, we'll talk about the relationship between critical thinking, analysis, and strategy. Uh, you really need to know sort of where you are and where you want to get to and what the obstacles are in order to plan to build your you know, military types, to build your battle plan. Uh, strategy is a problem solving method uh, and this technique will be very useful to you in uh, other classes that you take and in your career and in life in general. Uh, whether strategy is working or not and what's causing it not to work if it's not working and again, we talk about in performance measurement, knowing when it gets off track. Uh, and now we need to discuss what to do if it looks like it's off track, the strategies that, that is. Uh, we'll discuss the relationship between strategies and performance measurement, kind of a review of uh, earlier lecture. And we'll discuss a concept called red ocean and blue ocean strategies. So uh, quickly, uh, we mentioned before that some organizations uh, really aren't strategic. Uh, they're doing activities. That they may be very good at doing activities, and they either hope or they assume that those activities are going to continue to make the organization successful. The organizations are on autopilot. They do activities. They assume that results will occur without thinking about those results. Uh, and so that's a very common situation for many, many organizations. And we explained this in earlier lectures about the down and in uh, becoming the primary focus even of the top people in the organization. So, so everyone's focused on the process and few are focused on strategy. Uh, managing for results, of course, is more difficult. Uh, you have to first figure out what results are to be achieved and that derives from the situational assessment. And those results are uh, structured as goals and sub-objectives of those goals. And then you have to develop the strategies, the innovative approaches to achieve the desired outcomes, desired goals and objectives. So uh, recognize that successfully uh, managing for results it means successfully developing, implementing innovative and creative strategies. It also depends on bold and confident leadership. Uh, and of course, if you're not managing for results, you generally have the opposite of bold and confident leadership, whatever that is. Uh, it requires thought and reflection uh, as you think about the issues and you think about um, creative, novel ways to address those issues through strategies 
and uh, make sure that uh, there's a recognition that uh, that managing for results is more than just showing up for work every day. It's really applying uh, effective, aggressive, positive management approaches in an organization. What is strategy? It's how to achieve the outcomes, the goals and objectives. Uh, strategy is thoughtfully constructed plan or method or action used to achieve a result. It's also uh, a general statement of direction. It's not, it's not action. Strategy is a statement of direction. It's not a statement of action. It doesn't mean that next week you'll hire 50 new people. It means that you need to uh, dramatically improve uh, the way you ship uh, and interact with customers. And that's the strategy. And then one of the actions would be to hire 50 new people. So it's a general statement of direction. It's not the specific detailed actions that you'll, you'll execute. Um, and uh, finally, strategy requires that the more senior positions in the organization <coughs> let go of uh, where they used to be, which is managing process, and spend a lot of time and effort uh, analyzing the situation and thinking about uh, strategies to achieve desired outcomes. Strategy and analysis. Strategy does begin with analysis. Uh, some people are better at analysis than others. Uh, it's okay because it takes a village. Uh, but. Uh, you know, we really need uh, people in the organization who are really good at analysis to really spend some time thinking things through. Being able to look at a set of facts and pull, pull them all together, take the facts uh, apart, uh, and then reassemble the facts in a way that makes strategic sense. So you can really say, this is the situation we're facing. This is the, uh, and I'll get into this in a second, these are the conditions we see. This is what's causing those conditions. This is how it's impacting the organization, and therefore, uh, the best way to deal with these issues is to pursue this line of action, and then to get all the resources and the, and the organizational uh, processes aligned to achieve uh, the goals through the strategies. Strategy involves maneuvering for success. Uh, again, the military is a great example uh, where we see this uh, in excellence. Uh, on the battlefield, picking the right place to fight, the right time to attack, the right time to, to retreat, to stop pursuing bad strategies, uh, and weighing and assessing uh, things as circumstances change, but to stay focused entirely on success. And so strategy really does involve a lot of uh, motion. It involves uh, coming up with the idea, putting the idea into play, and then uh, reacting to uh, the situation on the ground as needed. Strategy uh, requires a lot of intuitive ability uh, and also a lot of analytical ability. Um, so uh, there's a recognition that uh, you know those who have stronger st stockpiles of intuition uh, and the ability to see the gray areas and not just the black and white uh, might have an advantage here. But again, uh, we need those who see black and white uh, to, to, to do things, um, but we need those who are best skilled at seeing the gray and the fuzzy and the, uh, the uh, intangible stuff uh, as part of our, our analytical group. Strategy is problem solving. Uh, this uh, technique is a massively important technique. Uh, you can use it in uh, your research methods classes. Uh, developing your thesis, you can use it in most of your classes, you can use it at work, and you can use it at home uh, when you're involved in parenting or just running a household. Uh, basically, the, uh, the, and a lot of people, uh, unfortunately, uh, are so judgmental that they can't use this method, and therefore this method is very, very good at forcing people to get into a, a, a systematic way to do analysis. And so the first thing always starts with conditions. Now, very often I have students say to me, the problem here is that the leadership is bad. Well, that's, that's like the solution, jumping to the end, right? Uh, and, uh, and so we always have to start our analysis off with conditions, and that's what the situational assessment should be. It should start off with facts. It should have hard data, numbers, and facts to identify, confirm, and establish the magnitude of the problem. So if you're in the private sector, uh, sales are declining, Sales among 18 to 35 year olds are declining. Uh, sales are increasing internationally, but decreasing domestically. Whatever the facts are, uh, 
Um, those facts need to be first be presented. Those are the, represent the conditions that tell us whether we have a problem or not. Uh, in the public sector, it might be uh, poverty levels, educational achievement, unemployment, traffic fatalities, workplace injuries, domestic terrorists, pre-incidents and incidents, and so on. So we have the ability both in all sectors, private and public and not-for-profit, to be able to sort of say, what are the conditions? What are the facts that we're seeing? And then based on the facts, especially the trends, we're able to identify the causes. Uh, and we use the causes uh, to, to say, what do we see here? What's the immediate cause? What's the obvious cause? And then we dig into that, like, well, what's causing that? And what's causing that? And finally, we try to get to the root cause of the target problem. Now, we can't always fix the root cause. Let's imagine that we uh, work for uh, an organization and there's an admiral, for example, and the admiral is the real problem, right? Well, we can't replace the admiral. That's just not going to happen. So we work our way back and we say, because of the admiral's management style, uh, we find ourselves uh, uh, being uh, shifted around our mission and our priorities. And so what can we do about that? And what's, you know, what's causing that? Well, we're not organized enough. And so uh, this causal analysis is extremely important. Uh, it starts by, by looking at the conditions, asking ourselves what's the obvious cause, the, the most apparent cause, and then what's causing that and what's causing that, looking for the root cause of our problems. And I tell you, if you fix the root cause of your problems, the conditions tend to improve or go away. And then finally, we have strategies, which uh, every cause that we've identified needs to have a strategy to mitigate it or to address it. So strategies have to focus on the causes, uh, and then the strategies uh, need to focus uh, as into the deepest causes, the closest to the root that we can get to. And they also have to be realistic and practical. Uh, like I said, we can't replace the admiral. So what, can, what strategies can we do to mitigate the problem situation. Now here's a way to test this model. If your strategies are working, the strategies are addressing the causes, the conditions should start to improve. So when you started this process to identify the conditions, they become the performance measure as to whether your diagnostic method is working. So conditions, causes, remedies, or strategies. Very important process, very important method to use, and we really need to use this when we develop strategies uh, in the strategic planning process. Uh, here's an example analyzing Ebola. Uh, the condition uh, the condition isn't that uh, no one's doing anything about Ebola. That's, uh, that's a different situation. The condition, the facts are that Ebola is spreading in Africa and being transmitted around the world. So what's causing it? Well, the nature of the virus, it's virulent and it's easily transmitted. There's no vaccine for the, for the virus. Uh, the state of Ebola science is not very good, so, and there's a need for better coordination and cooperation. There's ineffective disease prevention and control approaches in Africa, especially there's unrestricted travel to infected regions. If, in fact, these are the causes of Ebola spreading in Africa and around the world, then what strategies do we need? Well, we look at the causes and we say, well, uh, we need more science so that the uh, virus is not viral and easily transmitted and we have a vaccine. Uh, and one way to do that, in, in thinking creatively, is to study similar viruses. So we can then perhaps get a breakthrough in terms of how to treat Ebola. Improved disease and prevention and control in Africa addresses the ineffective disease prevention and control approaches. Improved travel screening and restrictions uh, deals with the unrestricted travel. And then development of an Ebola detection technology. And so you can sort of see that the strategies are tackling the causes and hopefully, if the strategies work, if they effectively deal with the causes, the condition will change. Ebola will not spread in Africa and around the world. Uh, FBI and child kidnapping. Uh, I was at a strategic planning session one time with the FBI agents. They all had their arms crossed, and uh, I asked them what the situation uh, they were facing was. Uh, they were like, uh, you know, well, we don't have any problems. You know, we're the FBI. Uh, all we do, we investigate. If there's a crime, we're going to get our man or our woman. And so it was a very uh, uncomfortable situation for me as a facilitator. And so I said, come on, there's got to be something. There's got to be something. And, uh, and again, someone said, no, we do everything very, very well. But I heard a, a soft voice in the background and say, except for child kidnapping. It was a very soft voice. I almost didn't hear it. And so I asked that person what they were talking about. 
and they start to explain the situation. They said if a child's kidnapped and there's no progress in six hours, very often we have a bad result. And I said, well, you know, so what's the cause of this? And they, they went on to discuss uh, that, uh, that the law enforcement typically don't take initial reports seriously, um, assuming the child probably ran away and the six hours go by. Uh, they discussed uh, not having effective law enforcement negotiation skills uh, at the local police level. They talked about jurisdiction quarrels, like the local uh, law enforcement refuses to call in the feds, even though kidnapping is an FBI uh, uh, issue. And so uh, basically working with the group after the initial resistance, uh, we found that the, uh, the strategies, the solutions here were to take calls more seriously, to improve local negotiation skills, and to resolve jurisdictional issues. Now, it's a lot more detail that I don't have time to get into, but again, you can see in the public sector, we have the same opportunity to uh, use the diagnostic model to analyze the situation, conditions, causes, remedies, slash strategies. Uh, so a strategy makes sense really uh, in the context of uh, what outcome you're trying to achieve. And so, you know, if we talk about un underfunded pension plans, uh, we, we could analyze that and do the same thing. If we talked about challenges facing credit unions, and I worked with the National Credit Union Administration, uh, we could talk about uh, uh, those issues. Issues facing law enforcement organizations, uh, problems involved in equal opportunity employment, uh, problems involved in trying to uh, sell uh, fashion to young people, you know, whatever issues are facing your programs, and influencing or affecting your main thing, those are the issues that need to be identified so the strategy can be developed to address them. Uh, in terms of refining strategies, uh, when we come up with our strategies, we then have to refine them into action. So from act strategy, which is a, a broad sense of movement or direction, uh, we have to analyze the strategy. We have to look at the obstacles, issues, and factors that have to be addressed to implement it. And then we have to characterize sort of who's going to do what, when, where, and who, and how much it's going to take, what resources we're going to use. And I always say this about strategy. Sometimes strategy um, in organizations where you can't get new money if you want to do new things, sometimes you have to deprogram old strategies that don't need to be done anymore or, or are minimally uh, beneficial and reprogram those resources into new strategies to make the organization uh, leap forward or be extraordinarily more successful. Uh, this, of course, will engender resistance to change because those doing the uh, marginally uh, beneficial uh, activities are not going to have their, are uh, not going to want to do new things or uh, be shifted around. So you're going to, this is the place where resistance to change really um, becomes a, a major issue. And you know in your org behavior and org theory courses, uh, you study that resistance to change stuff, and you know how to deal with it. But expect change, especially in a situation where you have to reprogram uh, resources to tackle new strategies. And then recognize that uh, once strategies are developed, you can pull together the specialists in the organization and create strategy implementation teams. Because once you uh, give direction to your outstanding uh, staff, uh, they're very capable of getting things done. And so this idea of coming up with the strategies and then organizing your implementers into strategy implementation teams is a very good one and useful. Uh, strategy is challenging. Some strategies involve tough issues. Uh, I mentioned this, if reorganization is necessary, people are not going to like this. They're going to resist it, especially the senior managers who are going to lose some uh, power. Uh, what if it makes sense? I encountered one situation where the IT organization, uh, the technology organization, was also doing some uh, data entry and some data um, management. And that function really did not belong in, in the IT organization, which was more focused on technical things, hardware and software. And so ultimately, through this process, the manager of IT organization realized that he needed to give away his uh, data management uh, uh, group to a better place in the organization. And so you know, he recognized that and he actually did the right thing. It was his idea. Uh, how are tough issues reconciled? Well, it takes um, a lot of time and effort on the part of the facilitators. Senior leadership's got to get on board, uh, and there are political implications sometimes uh, when you're trying to, to deal with change. Uh, the role of the strategist, um, you know, strategists are uh, there's sometimes not a lot of strategists in the organization, but there are some, a few. 
And so, uh, you know, we identify the strategists. We make sure they're involved in this process. Uh, their role is to communicate the imperative. And sometimes this can be the facilitators, too, uh, to help create the program logic. And we're going to talk about logic models soon. Uh, they're uh, to identify and overcome the obstacles and, and how to translate logic into action. Some people are good strategists. They excel at devising schemes and plans and courses of action. They're able to sort of like think of stuff that nobody else could think of, uh, think of uh, approaches that, that were not thought of in the past. Um, and so uh, strategists are really critical, and it's very important to have strategists involved in the process. Uh, there's uh, evidence of how do you know when a strategy is not working. We talked about this in performance measurement. The data lines start to diverge with what you wanted and what you get are uh, diverging. Uh, in the private sector, this looks like poor profits, falling stock prices, uh, loss of market share, and maybe even eventual bankruptcy. Uh, you don't want to let strategy, uh, you don't want to let the organization get to that point before you change strategies, hopefully. In the public sector, uh, failed strategy sometimes is more, more difficult to see, takes longer to get attention, um, and it's often identified by external forces like the media or an office of inspector general or public criticism or outrage or legislative hearings. And there's a lot of iconic examples. FEMA after Hurricane Katrina uh, took a lot of uh, heat uh, and really needed to strategize and reinvent itself. Public housing failures, Baltimore's projects, Chicago's Cabrini Green, uh, gang members covered the walls with graffiti, damaged doors, windows, and elevators. Uh, the apartments and housing was wrecked and cockroach infest infested. Uh, rotting garbage was stacked up. Their uh, basic utilities were unrepaired. There were boarded up windows. There was lots of decay and government neglect. And yet, this situation went on for years and years and years and years. And who suffered? It was the people living in these, uh, in these housing projects. And so again, it's still more difficult to see that strategy isn't working, that the organization is just doing activities. Um, but you know, when you really put your mind to it and you build the right strategic uh, framework, uh, you're able to monitor progress and know if strategies are succeeding or not. Uh, when strategies don't work, uh, as we said in performance measurement, uh, we need to figure out what's going on. We're not trying to punish the managers. We're trying to say, do we have the right strategy? Are we missing strategies? Or are the strategies just not working? Are we not implementing them well? Or are they just the wrong strategies? And so we really need to, again, do our analysis when strategies are not working. Uh, example, uh, um, of a failed uh, strategy was uh, putting the Hubble telescope into space years ago uh, with a defective lens. So effectively, the telescope cost a lot of money to get into space, but it was useless because it didn't have a good lens. So we said, well, that, that didn't work. So we came back and we got a new lens onto the uh, Hubble telescope, sent the shuttle up, and we replaced the lens. Uh, getting real. Uh, conceiving new ways to achieve the mission and outcomes. Uh, universities responding to demand for online classes. This is strategy. Agencies that collect fees accept Apple Pay. Uh, we let people apply for permits online. Uh, I'm trying to renew a ham radio license uh, with the FCC, and I have to tell you, it's a very difficult process, even though it's online. It's not, it's not intuitive or natural, uh, but there's no one to put pressure on the FCC uh, in this day and age to make it a better, a better process. Noticing that homeland terror threats are shifting and developing strategies to deal with new forms like homegrown terrorism and, and ISIS issues, et cetera. Reimagining the customer uh, experience. Apple uh, is very good at this. Uh, other organizations uh, are not quite as good. Shifting from being in charge to partnering. Uh, reducing agency costs while offering more value. These are all examples of you know, strategies and you know, how strategy really works in, on the ground level. Strategies and measurement, we talked about this in the measurement uh, lecture. Usually we don't have the data to tell us what works, so we need to spend a lot of time uh, focusing on having the right data, outcomes, what, what outcomes are occurring or, or are they not occurring, and how do we measure it, how often do we measure it. Um, often uh, politics can overcome data. Uh, an example is implementing common core standards to increase educational effectiveness. Politically, a lot of teachers oppose the standards because of the job security threat. And therefore, uh, Common Core, which, which is a way of measuring, uh, is, uh, is, is not the focus. The focus is the uh, resistance to and the objections to Common Core. Uh, some results uh, take a long time to measure. 
and are difficult to isolate. And so we, we did mention this in the performance measurement discussion. And so uh, sometimes we have to be patient and we have to have intermediate measures which add up to the slower, longer measures uh, that are outcome related. Uh, and then finally, out of the box thinking, uh, mentioned uh, or alluded to a few times that uh, strategy really does require uh, really uh, trying to rethink the way things are done. And so uh, a, a, a bit of research was done and the labels red ocean and blue ocean strategies were, were identified where red ocean strategies are sort of the traditional things that have been used by the organization for many years. And it's hard to conceive of, of moving away from those because of the risk and the uncertainty and the discomfort. Um, but blue ocean strategies are, are, are identified and those are ones that have not been used before, did not exist before, uh, have not even in some cases been used by others and are completely new. Uh, you might think of uh, uh, wearable uh, computers or wearable technologies as blue ocean strategies. You can think of uh, a uh, wired home, an internet connected uh, refrigerator, internet connected uh, washers and dryers and so on. So we'll see uh, in the coming future lots and lots and lots of innovation all evolving from blue ocean strategies. So there's no reason that any organization going through the strategic planning process can't possibly adopt uh, innovative and creative strategies that are new and bold and different. Uh, characteristics uh, uh, of these uh, two methods of red ocean or blue ocean, to solve a problem, don't rely on an approach used by others. Uh, sometimes they say this is the best way to do it, but sometimes the benchmarks are not creative or innovative, they're just a, a different way to do the same thing. Consider entirely new ways to solve a problem and forge public and private sector versions uh, of uh, the best of breed. Uh, know that Cirque du Soleil uh, reinvented the circus concept, right? Uh, and, and that Ford uh, reinvented the, the transportation concept from horse and buggy to cars and recognized that Apple reinvented the music industry with iTunes. It just completely changed uh, the music industry that I grew up with and it did it in a very positive way. Uh, after strategies, this is uh, for some of you a very important. After the strategies are developed, uh, it's now time to say, now let's look at our organization. Uh, given that the those are the strategies we want to pr pursue, what's going on inside the organization that we need to fix in order to pursue that? And so, uh, and so those burning internal issues that some of you uh, wanted to jump on at the beginning, um, now it's time to jump on them. You've got, you know what direction the organization needs to go in. So we ask ourselves, do we have the people, the funds, the technology, the management systems, the leadership, the communication, the facilities, do we have the diversity, do we have all those things that you all wanted to dig into, uh, now it's time to deal with them. And so uh, part of the strategic planning process is coming back and asking ourselves, if we're really serious about achieving the strategies we've laid out, do we have the organization to do that? And if not, what do we need to fix? Do we need more different people, more different knowledge, skills, and abilities? Do we need new technology? Uh, do we, since we can't get new money, do we have to reprogram money from someplace else? Uh, do we have to end or change our low impact programs so we can divert those resources into the high end programs and new stuff? Uh, what things must we address internally in order to achieve our goals, objectives, strategies, and performance targets. And so again, I know that there's a natural tendency of uh, a lot of people in strategic planning to want to dig into these internal issues first without going the external issues first. Uh, and that can become a mistake, as I've mentioned many times. Logic models, uh, we're going to go over logic models uh, very soon in a whole separate lecture. A logic model shows the big picture. It's a visual way to see what strategic plan is all about. Uh, it enables us to see uh, the situation, the desired outcomes, uh, the uh, strategies we want to pursue, and it let lets us see how we're going to measure our progress. Uh, this is very hard to see, uh, but this is an example of a logic model. And it gives a, uh, this was a State Department uh, uh, organization focused on the Andean counter narcotics initiatives. This is the Andean region of uh, South America. Um, in Colombia and surrounding countries. And so it had a mission. Uh, there were situation or conditions identified in yellow. Uh, and then uh, there were three basic uh, strategies or, 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 or approaches. Uh, one involved counter-narcotics, one involved dealing with crime, 
and one involved dealing with economic and social development in the Andean region. And then from each of those uh, primary uh, areas of focus uh, come the uh, specific strategies. So for counter-narcotics, there was a strategy of interdiction and another strategy of eradication. And you can see the details below that. For crime, uh, oh, and also stabilization. For crime, there was civilian, improving civilian law enforcement and the overall criminal justice system in the Andean region. And for uh, economic and social development, uh, there was the idea of, uh, of making sure that, uh, that farmers had things to grow instead of growing cocaine and poppy seeds, et cetera. And so uh, you can see how a logic model visually is very useful because it shows the whole plan uh, in a visual way. So our major points, uh, strategies are critical uh, in a results-based management world. What do we want to achieve? What are our objectives and goals? What outcomes do we want to achieve? And what strategies will we use to achieve them? Uh, we know that a strategy is a uh, means of moving um, towards achieving outcomes. Uh, we know, however, that strategy has to be based in analysis and problem solving. Um, we need to know what's causing the situation. First, we need to know the situation. It's our situational assessment. Then we need to know what's causing the situation. Hopefully, that's in the situational assessment, too. So we can then develop strategies to tackle the causes so that the situation will improve and will, our outcomes will be, will be better than, than what we will we'll achieve what we want to achieve. Strategy failure or implementation failure, if we look at our data over time and our strategies are not working, is it because we didn't have the right strategies, uh, we were missing strategies, or the strategies are not being implemented correctly? I mean, what is the cause? And then make adjustments. It's not a gotcha situation. It's a, it's a make the strategies work situation. And that's what we need to do when we do strategy analysis. Uh, strategies and performance measurement. Uh, performance measures tell us whether the strategies are working or not. It's a very tight linkage. And then the idea of having blue ocean strategies, uh, things that make us focus in a positive way uh, uh, on um, being successful. It's about innovation and creativity, et cetera. Uh, that's the end of our lecture on strategy. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this is Dr. Kessler out.